You're listening to Accentuate the Positive with Car and Swain. Today's show is a pre recorded show recorded late 2023. You're listening today on the United Public Radio Network 107.7 and the UFO Paranormal Radio Network 105.3 FM out of New Orleans. You got to accentuate the positive. You're listening to Karen Swain, teacher of deliberate creation, accentuating the positive, showing you a way to a better life. Accentuating the positive, it's not just bad, it's sanity. Who in their right mind would accentuate anything else? G'day, g'day, and welcome to another show, Accentuating the Positive with Karen Swain. We're actually accentuating the healing today with the beautiful Gail Lynn. Welcome to the show, Gail. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. We, uh, our paths have been crossing for years, but here we are finally. Well, I actually think it's very synchronistic. I think you reached out to say, you know, can I come on the show? And I I might've said, I don't really promote other people's healing work, but then I do like to promote holistic tech. What's the word I'm looking for? Futuristic tech is the word I'm looking for. It's been given to us from our spiritual and galactic brothers and sisters and i think well i think okay so i know that this is what we're talking about today which is kind of exciting but we're also going to talk about your journey which is also equally as exciting to hear about you yeah i know i was listening to some of your podcasts because i like to get to know you know who's interviewing me and i just fell in love with ann tucker and what is it nadi nadi is that how you say her name nadi hana yes nadi gorgeous and you guys were talking about the movie contact and the first time that i got in the harmonic egg i remember sitting in the chair looking down going okay to go okay to go okay to go and i thought oh my gosh this is so funny because that's what it felt like it felt like i was in this capsule this fear we're getting ahead of ourselves but because I, I heard you say that I was listening to you and chatting with Luke's story this morning and I was just telling Gail that Luke and I've been I don't know Instagram or Twitter friends forever and had a few chats back and forth and then I saw him sort of in the flesh animated talking and I'm like oh that's Luke's story I've never watched his podcast and yeah and you were talking about that and I'm like how synchronistic she's talking about contact I've just been talking to Nadi Hanna all about con- so there's lots of synchronicities going on here lots of right. synchronicities but let me tell people a little bit about you and we'll get into the harmonic egg but uh, I want to share your journey with people so Gail's journey towards becoming a pioneer in the realm of frequency healing and energy medicine was born out of a personal adversity in 2007 at the age of 37 Gail faced a life-altering diagnosis of severe cardiovascular stress, a condition wrought by the relentless stress of two challenging relationships and three fiercely competitive careers in the automotive, telecommunications and film industries. I can relate to that. I know how competitive those industries are, especially the film industry. This critical turning point spurred her to explore alternative paths to restore her health. Immersing herself in the realm of energy medicine, Gail experienced a profound shift in her well-being through a series of whole body light and sound treatments. She started seeing more manifesting success stories, more intuitive abilities in both herself and her clients, and knew there was something more to uncover. Gail's pursuit of knowledge culminated in the creation of the harmonic egg which is the I think it's ET tech actually (laughs) the ET tech or given by spirit an immersive healing chamber that integrates cutting edge light and soul sound technologies with the principle of sacred geometry and Tesla mathematics This innovative approach has propelled frequency healing to unprecedented levels, offering life-changing solutions for individuals seeking to restore balance and vitality. And using sound and light is a non-invasive way of healing to lift the veil and see the power of being human and the unlimited power of who we are. And you've got a book, 
And the book is called Unlocking the Secrets to Healing, Why Science is Looking to the Past for the Future of Medicine. Sounds like a good book. You've been everywhere, darling, when you're like, get it out there. You're getting this information out. You've been on Gaia TV, Coast to Coast with George Norrie and and many others. What's it say here? We can manifest like crazy and be in abundance. There's plenty for everyone I've written down here. So your website is harmonicegg.com. Let's get into the healing journey. Before you had the crisis, did you ever think you'd sort of be doing something like that or you sort of gung-ho into the automotive sort of industry and sort of into the corporate world? I was really good at the corporate world, but I knew there was something more. You know, I'm in Detroit, Michigan and Henry Ford and they're grooming us to be automotive workers. And I, I told my mom when I was younger, I said, there's got to be more than just automotive. So I ended up moving to Texas and then I was in the good old boys network with the telecommunications and doing international consulting. And I, I see how the universe was grooming me for this time, the engineering part, the international business part, and then the Hollywood part where I can learn extemporaneous communication, being on camera, you know, speaking to people. And so it's kind of comical now how it all came together. Did I think I was going to be doing this? No, not at all. But I did. I was left with no other options. At the end of the day, this was the only option that the universe gave to me. And it was basically a download. I think it is a Syrian technology and possibly from a past life that I had. I have had past life regressions, a past life that I've had in Planet Sirius B. And my teachers there were able to bring this through. And I believe that this technology is also being used out there in spaceships and different places for healing. So when I see my name on the patent, I have to laugh. I'm like, who's Gail Lynn? This is not mine. This is for the planet. It's for the people, the humans to heal. It's to help them to connect to their higher self, to get back into their power, to feel, to get rid of the illusion that we're all separate. We are all one. And just to really connect them back to their higher self and, and their soul energy. It's really beautiful. It's helped me so much with intuition and manifestation and really just clearing that veil. Yeah, clearing the veil. A lot of people talk about the veil of forgetfulness, but the veil is not outside of us. The veil is inside us. You know, like our DNA structure, the physical body, the body that we're wearing creates that veil because often when you hear of stories of people that have out-of-body experiences they're not completely beyond it but they're in a completely different perceptual experience like beyond what we call the veil so the where's the veil the veil isn't out here it's it's in there and yeah this is all about yeah shifting the dna i guess of the vehicle that we're wearing called the body yeah i love it i love to inspire people and and for them to know like I came from a blue collar environment, dad with a seventh grade education, mom with a high school diploma. You know, I'm an unlikely person to, to be where I am today, except for I listened and I stepped away from the ego and so many people, there's a lot of technologies and machines out there. And I think that there are downloads, but the human ego gets in the way and they think, okay, well, I know more than this download, so I'm going to do it this way and this way. And it's end up, it's hurting people. There's technologies out there that are going to hurt people. We're in the age of frequency medicine, the future of medicine, the future is here, but we have to be discerning. We have to know that everything is energy and we have to tune in and say, is this really right for me? We're a lot of different galactic beings. So not everybody's going to want to heal in a large wooden egg. They might want to try something else. We have to find that combination of what works for you, for your body's healing, to reset your nervous system, to help your body get into the environment by which it can heal. What was the journey towards developing and listening to this technology? Oh, you know, I think it started when I was born, being stuck in fight or flight, and just knowing that later on in life I had to reset my nervous system but there were things that came up where I just didn't understand how this universe was working. Um, I played softball for 30 years and I started playing when I was seven years old and I could visualize hitting the ball and the ball just going really far. And I was so good. We had a field near my house that was backed up by 
tennis courts. And if you hit the ball on the tennis court, it was a home run. So that was my goal. Always hit it into the tennis court, a home run. A few years later, they changed the rule. If you hit it in the tennis courts, it's an out. So I felt I was being penalized for being good. I was being penalized for the success. And I thought, this is a really screwed up world. I mean, how can we be penalized for that? So I was looking at the world from a different viewpoint my entire life. So then I was 29 years old and I had a reading and the healer told me, you won't have any financial freedom until you're 50. Well, I put that in my subconscious and I struggled for 20 years, you know, not being able to, in my head, I said, okay, I can't be financially free until I'm 50. So how many of your listeners out there have listened or heard a healer tell them something and then embodied that and created it as their own reality? So I feel like that's what, that's what she did to me. Whether it was true or not, that's what came into my conscious mind. So I learned, you know, I had a lady come in one time and she was dying and she said, oh, can you talk to your healer and ask what's wrong with me? And I, I went into my office, I talked to the healer and he said, oh, when I tuned into her, he basically had Edgar Casey's gifts, but he was awake when he could see through the body. And he said, all I see are bones. She's going to be dead in like two weeks. So wow. I go back into the room and she says, oh, what did he say? And I said, um, he said, you know, take a break from doing so many modalities and so much healing and spend some time with your grandkids. That's what he said. And she's like, well, that's a really good idea. And I went wow. to her funeral. Uh, she died in 10 days. So I was at her funeral within two weeks. Mm, wow. So we look at this kind of stuff, these kind of things. And the we have to be responsible. We have free will. I could not go in there and say, you're going to be dead in two weeks. That would be so irresponsible. But a lot of these healers put these things in our subconscious. And I was talking to a couple of people over the weekend and she said she had a reading and her friend was standing next to her. And she said the whole reading was about her friend. She was, the healer was picking up the energy of her friend, but saying, this is you. Another lady yesterday told me, Oh, uh, I had a reading and the the healer was telling me, oh, you're in very dark times. And she described her friend who was sitting next to her that was going through a divorce and described the husband to a T. And she and at least she was astute enough to know she's not talking about me. She's talking about my friend. So she told her friend, get out of here. She's reading you. So we look at all these different modalities and all this healing. We have to really start to tune into our own bodies and listen to our own bodies and not be running around saying, hey, tell me what's wrong with me. Tell me what to do, like we do with doctors. We need to know exactly. that we have, we're our best doctor. Absolutely. With psychic ability, somebody just asked me, they were talking about putting me in a conference next year. Do you talk to the Arcturians and the Palladians? And I'm like, yeah. And the Arcturians tell me that we need to understand our mental agility and how we focus And especially as we move into a more telepathic, intuitive, psychic society, because yes, you can pick up energy, but who's and where's it coming from? And this is where a lot of psychics, I remember a psychic, she wasn't professional. She was someone I was studying with at the time, read me and she read this whole thing about how this, I'd been raped and I had had this son and this son had mental problems. And she was talking to it to like, she was talking like it was me and it was not my story. And I'm like, huh? And then um, she says, is this you? And I'm like, no, this is not my story. And then she tuned in again and she's like, oh, but it was your story. It's a past life. So, yeah, is it your story? Is it a past life story? Is it the next door neighbor's story? Like especially when you're reading past lives, whose past life are you reading? Yeah, there's a lot to learn about all this stuff, a lot. Yeah, I think it's fascinating and I love it. Um, I had my a past life regression from Dr. Norm Sheely. And I remember saying, I had a shaman come in and she said, you know, you're going to invent a technology. And I'm like, no, you're crazy. You're crazy. I'm not going to do that. And she said, I think you really need to know who you were because it's coming through again. And she said, now don't go to some, you know, cray cray, you know, regressor that says, oh, you were a Chinese dancer in China and blah, blah, blah. She said, you really need to know what you're here for. So I called Norm Sheely and I said, I needed to have the best 
past life regressor or reader in the world. And he said, well, I'm second best. I said, I'll take second best. So when he read me, it was so interesting because I'm a Scorpio and I tend to think that I'm making stuff up in my head. So he's regressing me and I'm like, I keep saying, uh, am I making this up? And I, you know, I kept interrupting him. Am I making this up? I know he wanted to probably just slap me. And so finally he, he got really, he got me to a place where I saw my shoes that I was wearing and I saw the clothes that I was wearing and I saw that I was a healer and I saw that I was making potions and I had, it was Egypt and seeming like maybe 3000 years ago. And I had a vibration chamber and I saw my son and my daughter helping and I saw everything that happened to me. And so he said, finally, I just started crying. It was so beautiful. And I said, okay, I get it. Beautiful. I don't think you have to be a Scorpio to, to worry about if you're making things up. I'm teaching people this stuff all the time and they all go into, I feel like I'm just making this up. I feel It's just my imagination. This can't really be real. This information I'm getting, it comes too easily. You know, it's just too easy, sort of like imagination is. What is imagination? Imagination is talking to the soul. First past life regression I had, I went with a girlfriend who's since left her body. We were young and I saw nothing. And she saw so many, she saw, she saw so many scenarios. And then at the end of it, she said to the guy who regressed her, yeah, but I could have just been making it all up. And he was so upset. <laughs> I don't think he was very versed in understanding how the mind works, but because it feels too easy. It's like, I could have just been making all that up. So it was your destiny to do this in this lifetime. Yeah, I had a mentor who, um, after speaking with Regina Meredith on Gaia TV, you know, she said that she was there for the fall of Atlantis. And I said, yeah, I think I was too. And we both think that this, this gentleman was possibly part of the reason. And it was his destiny to come to the planet now and turn the technology over to the divine feminine. So there's always all these stories and you know, some things resonate, some things don't. I'm just so grateful for what he brought. He brought more of a light box in a rectangular shape. But my engineering mind and, and I thought, you know, we need egg. The egg is, it's where life comes from. It's, you know, the birth and Somebody told me in the airport the other day that there is an egg-shaped chamber that's helping people to pass on. And I don't know, she said one of the maybe Scandinavian countries. So I need to look this up because I'm fascinated. We have a Kevorkian and we're, you know, we had a whole thing in the USA with Kevorkian helping people to pass. And she said that there's now a technology that's helping people that are sick and they want to go to pass and it's in an egg. Super fascinating. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's a beautiful technology to have because, right? Yeah. Like I've helped, I helped a, a relative pass over. She kept asking me, How do I die? How do I die? And I kept saying to her, It's like anything we manifest hope. Her name was Hope. You make a decision and you line up with it. You stop wanting it and you say, Right, this is happening. Instead of why do we have to get sick? Because she was like, she was in her 90s and she was hoping some sickness would take her out. And then the doctor said she might have cancer. She's like, yes, yes, this will kill me. That's so cute. <laughs> why do we need a sickness to take us out? Why can't we just like yeah. leave the well, body? It's the subconscious. It's the belief system. Mm -hmm. It's the illusion that we've been, you know, kind of programmed with. Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of unlearn everything we've ever learned. And my aunt used to listen to coast to coast radio and uh art bell and the aliens and she was in her 90s when she passed away and she literally put the dress out hung mm -hmm. it up laid down died and when the paramedics came they said oh you know we need to have all of her medication and her son said she's not on any medication they said no 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 where's her medication she's not on any medication no 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 he said, no, she's not on any medication. Wow. And it was so funny because it was the time that I was going to be there. I was flying into Michigan. She knew all that. So I was able to attend her funeral. You can't make this stuff up. Mm -hmm. She planned that out. Yeah. Good on her. That. Yes. That's a paradigm that needs shifting, knowing our power to make decisions and manifest anything, including 
when we want to leave the planet without having to manifest some disease. You know, the, mob, the guides are saying often the disease is not for the person leaving, but the people leaving they leave behind. Because when you see people suffering and sick, then their passing becomes less traumatic. And they just reminded me. I'm like, yeah, well, that's another conversation. Is you know, that's like the conversation about death being so traumatic when it doesn't need to be if you stay in contact with the person who's just stepped into another room. You made a movie about Elvis with his stepbrother, David. This was on your healing journey. Do you want to talk about how that came about? Sure. I went through a divorce and I was very, very angry. We were talking about before we hit record, the anger in the liver. And so I stepped into a karate school. There are no accidents. And I just saw the signs as, you know, women's self-defense and kickboxing. I'm like, I need to kick some of this anger out of me. And so uh, they say, oh, there's this gentleman. He's going to do a seminar for us. And he's Elvis Presley's stepbrother. And I'm like, really? Knowing Elvis is like knowing Mickey Mouse. So I, I challenged him. And then I found myself laying flat on the mat where he, you know, kind of threw me down. And so there was this little struggle with between our personalities and he said oh i'm gonna prove to you that i was that i am i was a stepbrother and he brought in books he's like this is me and elvis this is me and i go okay 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 i believe you and i watched this gentleman who was so dynamic and so charismatic and so big not big heavy but just big personality and he was talking to people do your dream do your dream do your dream and one day I said to him, I said, what is your dream? Well, don't ask me that. You know, Elvis was my father figure, my mentor, my friend, my family member, you know, and, and so he was my boss. He's like, nobody could do more than Elvis. I said, well, there has to be something that Elvis couldn't do. Nope, Elvis could do anything. But he said, Colonel Parker would not let him direct a movie. And he always wanted to. I said, well, I guess you're going to direct a movie. And he says, do you know anything about making a movie? I said, no, but how hard can it be? That was probably the stupidest question I ever said. And so he said, you know, he wanted to really portray the behind the scenes Elvis. So 16 year old boy goes to work for his world famous stepbrother who happens to be Elvis Presley and tries to protect him from everything, but ultimately Elvis himself. Sounds like a good movie. So we did the movie. It uh, went straight to DVD. But in the process of doing the movie, I felt such a connection with Elvis and the stories that I heard from the Memphis Mafia. And they would say, you know, Elvis was a healer. I said, what, what does that mean? And they said, you know, we were skiing uh, in Colorado and this guy, you know, fell and there was a bone sticking out of his, his leg. And Elvis just did that little hand gesture that he does and he put his hand over the guy's leg and the bone went back in. Who was this guy that people still remember? He didn't tour outside the United States, but he's worldwide loved by hundreds of millions of people. And so when I was helping David, I felt Elvis's presence and him kind of saying, thank you. You know, thank you for taking David under your wing and really helping him to find who he is. Because when you're around a big presence like that, you're you're kind of, you don't know who likes you for who you are or who you are. Did people like David or do they like David because he's Elvis' stepbrother or because he's David Stanley? And I'm sure Priscilla went through that. Lisa Marie probably went through that. Anyone who was around him was kind of just... Um, overtaken by his energy and his aura. And so I felt his presence a few times and it was very big, very powerful. And, you know, David said the day that he passed away, he had, David went to drop a friend off, came back to Graceland Mansion and he was like, I know Elvis is in the building, but I don't feel him. And this was a 20 some year old kid who was tuned into that. He said he ran up the stairs, one of the first to find him dead. But his energy had left the building and he could feel it as soon as he pulled out. I mean, how amazing would that have been to experience somebody like that? It was really, really cool. That's 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I was fascinated hearing you talk about it because when the movie Baz Luhrmann made about Elvis came out, which is kind of like a two hour rock video, uh, I, I came home from the movie. I think I went to see it at the cinema and I was obsessing about Elvis. And I started watching documentary after documentary. I think I stayed up all night obsessing about him because I've never obsessed about him ever. I just thought he was just this famous dude. Okay. He's over there, you know, like all the rest of the famous people. And I saw in one of the documentaries that he was really into spirituality and he was reading books like Autobiography of a Yogi and all sorts of books like that that were available at the time. And I started thinking, I started wiping away the veil of fame and actor and good looks and I started to look at him differently, like who are you and what did you do in this world? Why were you so famous? Why did you hold that charisma? What was it about you? I started asking those questions and I got this download about who he was, this, this higher evolved sort of galactic being that came for a very specific reason to shift the society of this world. And how he did that was obviously through his music, was he shifted a lot of the prejudice that we had at the time, you know, between black and whites, because he came into the world of music at a time where there was still segregation in America. And they were showing me this bigger picture of who Elvis was and what his role was in the larger picture of this world and I was just like I had never thought about him like that because I was so smoke screened with the fame good looks sort of movies and there's just a much bigger picture to him like you said he was a healer and yeah, uh, yeah and he was like this higher conscious being and that that charisma that people talked about was that aura as you say that massive aura that he came in with yeah mm. I almost yeah. wonder if you know John Lennon and Johnny Cash and Elvis Presley had some kind of a soul contract you know there's some things that have been said where Elvis told the government you know John Lennon is cutting down the establishment and you know and he's he's bad and so what if Elvis's words or what got John Lennon killed? And but what if John Lennon came into this world with a contract, a soul contract, to say, you know, let me show people what it's like. I'm signing up to be killed. And so when we kind of talked to them on the other side, they were like, you know, this was all we didn't part need of the each plan. other. It was, it was all part of the plan to teach the human race something. Absolutely, it's really beautiful when you look at death that way. Absolutely. And you look at, uh, you know, because I just think that death is a beautiful thing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I was thinking, because I think in the movie, you, the movie that, what was your role in the movie? It was called Protecting Elvis, wasn't it? Uh, it was called Protecting the King. We couldn't Protecting. use the word Elvis because it was, oh. you know, copyrighted by Graceland, you know, oh. so, so on and so forth. And so my role was executive producer. And so okay. basically it was to help David. I brought my business knowledge to help David raise the money, do the private placement memorandums, the, you know, the, the investment stuff. And then to organize, I was a project manager in corporate for a very long time and a producer's basically a project manager. And so yeah. it was, you know, looking at the budget, watching the budget, you know, getting, getting David in front of the right people and just really talking it up. And what we did is we we would bring like an Academy Award, you know, the he'd, he'd bring it up on stage and, you know, just manifesting it and bringing it to um, something tangible. It was, David taught me a lot about manifesting and, you know, setting an intention and bringing things into fruition. And so, yeah, I definitely needed to go through all those stages of my life to be where I am today. But I tell people all the time, if I can do it, anybody can do it. But you got to focus. I have so many people who say, oh, I have this idea and 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 all these ideas. And they never really do any of them because there's no focus. Yeah. And so that's what I had to teach David. He was doing karate seminars. He was doing motivational speaking. He was doing this. He was doing that. I said, if you're going to do this movie, you need to focus. Yeah. And so it was kind of keeping him focused. Uh, was another one of my roles. Is he still alive today? David? David? Yeah. 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 I just I just saw him uh, a couple of weeks ago. We were in Vegas. He lives at the Westgate Hotel, which was the old Hilton where Elvis um, used to 
play. Mm. And he uh, basically takes around uh, high rollers, you know, and, you know, he's their uh, personal aide and, you know, kind of showing them around. And yeah, so he was so funny because he said, yeah, I was sitting with Barry Manilow and Barry Manilow said, uh, you know, he's done more. Um, what? How did he say this? Let's see. He's had more shows, I think, in, in Vegas than Elvis had. Huh. And David, let me just say that you haven't had more sold out shows. And I'm like, you're talking to Barry Manilow like this? He's like, yeah. He goes, you know, Elvis had more sold out shows. So That's we funny. just kind of laugh. But David's a pretty big personality. Yeah. So I just, I I just saw him a few weeks ago. I bet. Yeah. The whole, the whole death thing, dying young. I think when I was researching it this morning, I go down rabbit holes and hear somebody say things and then I'd research it. Oh, really? Let me look at that. Let me look at that. That's the way my mind works. And I find all this stuff, you know, I found something. Did Elvis do it? Did he kill himself? You know, and all that sort of stuff. There's all this speculation about his death and everyone does this with death. But people yeah. with those big jobs burning out, I think I heard Esther Hicks once say during a channeling, some souls come to shine brightly and burn out young. And that's yeah. their soul contract, like the Lennons, the Elvises, the Marilyn Monroes, the Lady Di, Princess mm -hmm. Dianas. And that early demise, that early leaving makes their message so much bigger and sort of spreads it spreads it across yeah there's there's great wisdom to that like it's all scripted in the journey you know you play the villain and this will happen and you'll talk to the CIA and that'll get me killed and all that sort of scripted like you say soul plan yeah, yeah it's so cool I, and I heard you talk about but Shirley MacLaine is still here but I heard you talk about her on a show love her yeah said, that's how you were introduced to Edgar Casey through Shirley MacLaine Shirley MacLaine yeah, yeah. I had a oh god yeah. this is this is talking about me now but I had a experience with her in spirit and that that's another that's a story for another time but she told me I'm one of your spirit guides and I said to her you are she didn't say good spirit guides she said I'm one of your guides and I said you are and then she said and it's so Shirley MacLaine so matter of fact she goes oh god do you think it's any coincidence that my books were the very first spiritual books you ever picked up and I kind of scratched my head and said Okay, I guess that's no coincidence yeah but she's still here which is amazing <laughs> bless her heart I know I know but that focus that is a great segue into how the egg came about, because that's a journey in itself. Do you want to talk about how the egg came about in your healing journey? Basically what you talked about, I was going down the wrong path health-wise. I had 23 years of migraine headaches. I had cystic acne. I had, my hair was falling out. Um, I was on thyroid medicine. They were telling me, you know, I had you know, liver fire, liver fire. Your liver is all messed up. I was having reproductive issues. They wanted to do a full hysterectomy on me. And my heart rate variability showed severe cardiovascular stress on the verge of an instant heart attack at 37 years old. So you got to make some changes at this point. So I, I said, you know, I have to make some changes. And I went to a C-level executive conference in Los Angeles, California. And I see this gentleman doing a presentation on this light box. And he's showing pictures of this little child. And when you see the, the child's face, you don't see any soul. You see, you're looking at eyes that are just blank. And the mother was told he'll never walk. He'll never talk. He'll never grow hair. He'll never have teeth. And she said, you know what? No, nobody gets to put this kind of limitation on my child. And so she found this light box. And so he's doing a presentation about this. At the end of the presentation, a little boy with arm crutches walks on stage, has hair, has teeth, can talk. And I thought, okay, what is this? If we're vibrational beings of light from source energy, this little boy had a miracle with sound and light. And so I found that place and I went there and within a couple of sessions, because their sessions were four sessions in three days. That's how their protocol worked. The severe cardiovascular stress was gone. It was, I was completely balanced out and I thought, how can this work? So my, in my engineering mind, I'm like, well, okay, what can I do? This light box with everything that I've learned about energies and entities, isn't the right shape for an immersive experience that I think could be with this kind of technology. So I started thinking about the egg shape and 
where egg the egg is where birth happens and and then I started thinking about the music and I'm like we need consciously created music we have to have music created by musicians with a high heart energy because I do believe that if you're listening to musicians who are angry just like if you're eating food from somebody who cooked it who was angry you can pick up their energy and I thought we have Absolutely. to be really careful with this music very 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 careful And they can't be MP3 files because they're compressed. And then you're cutting off some of the integrity of the music. And it can't be, it has to be made out of wood. I don't want any um, metal. I don't want any plastic. I want this to be an expression of acoustic immersion for the client. And I don't want any Wi-Fi. I don't want any, you know, additional EMS. I don't want a bunch of technology. I want this to be simple. And almost back to nature, like forest bathing in inside of wood. And then I started thinking about the protocols and I started really talking to clients and really everything was just coming through very easily. Like you said, it's just, it was very easy. And so I said, okay, now it has to be something that doesn't store entities. If somebody releases something, I need it to be cleared. because I don't want them picking up something. I don't want anything that I put my name on to hurt anybody. So through this sacred geometric form, it's energetically self-cleaning and it's, it's releasing these things. Now, when you're in a high vibration, when you're staying in a place of love and gratitude, disease doesn't live there. Disease doesn't understand love and gratitude. It, it actually hates it. Disease loves fear and hate and shame and guilt So when you're inside the egg, we, I've created a divine feminine business model. So the owners are in love with their egg. They're in love with each other. We support each other on the private Facebook page. And we're always in cooperation with each other. And people feel that love. So they get into the egg and they're telling me, oh my gosh, something just bubbled up and flew out of my chest or something was running down my arm and flew out my hand. And, and I tell them, you know, the, the negative entities feel the love inside the harmonic egg. And they're like, oh, oh I'm, I'm out of here. This isn't a comfortable place for me. So I wanted this to be an amazing, loving experience for people that they could go in, heal on their own, not as a group where people are releasing things and they might be picking them up here and there. And they're just immersed in this beautiful acoustic wooden egg where life began and they're going back to that perfection of who they are and who they were and so then they have the 10 minutes there's 40 minutes of music and you're reclined in a zero gravity position so it's your feet at the level of your heart or above and your the music is a spiraling around you and there's a galactic place that is almost a portal where the egg energy is finding the imperfections in your human energy and then kind of smoothing it all out. Some people feel somebody maybe touches their face and massages their face. Some people feel a hand on them. Some people feel the energy in there. And it's almost like there's physicians in there from another galaxy that are tuned into what's going on in the body. and assisting and fixing it and it's very subtle so sometimes they'll say oh i felt this little sharp pain in my shoulder and i tore my rotator cuff and i haven't been able to lift my arm you know past this and they come out and they're doing this and they're and they're amazed why does it why do we have to believe that healing takes years or months why can't it be an instant and i think elvis showed us and he could instantly put that bone back in the body and heal. Wow. Yeah. There's so much to say about this. There's so much to say about this. So as you're talking, I'm chatting to my mob, the guides, and talking about the implications of all of this. So I remember having this conversation a while ago with them about healing, but there's some responsibility that we have in our own healing. If there's some device that can take it all away, then we take no part in that responsibility. And th this is what they say to me. They say, 
Yeah, well, it's like a surgeon, isn't it? Or a chiropractor. I'm, I'm, I remember once my chiropractor said to me, I feel like a mechanic. You know, you go out and smash up your car and you come to me and I fix it. I put it together like a panel beater. <laughs> but then you're going to go out and smash up your car again. You'll have to come back. And that's that's the message. Like we can fix you, but it's your responsibility with how many times you you can go back out into life and stress and worry and your same thought forms, your same ideas about life and who you are inside of it and create more disease. But do you want to do that? So, yeah, the technology is there to heal easily, effortlessly through frequency. But it's up to us to maintain that and change the way we think and feel and how we operate as humans, right? Yeah, and our mindset and our words that we say and how we criticize each other and there's so many different things i had a gentleman come in one time and he said um we were on spaceships together in another lifetime and you were a master geneticist and cool. he said and i flew these egg shaped things he said so when i don't want to lean back in the egg when you put me in i want to sit up because this is how i flew these eggs i was you know i had my controls right here and i'm thinking this guy's a little baddie right and he said, you know, I just remember that I would go out there and I would blow up as long as you had one cell, you could bring me back. Yeah. And he said, this is your teachings from that time as a master geneticist that are brought back into the egg to help people to heal. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think you've, you've explained the shape. Because I had a, I jotted down a question here: Why an egg and not a pyramid? Because we've had a lot of conversations about pyramids with people and how amazing the shape of a pyramid is. Uh, I think you've sort of explained that. Yeah. Well, there's that all. Have you heard of the negative electric green with the pyramids? Some people are making pyramids, but they they haven't actually got the trajectory correct. And right. so at the very top, there's the negative electric green, and so it can actually hurt people. So. That's why I'm saying at the beginning, when people have these downloads, we have to really pay attention and listen and not let the ego get in the way. And I've told all my friends, if I let my ego get in the way, come over and just slap me because I want to stay humble because my energy is in the egg, just like their energy will be in anything that they create. And so the humility needs to be there and the expression of love and the expression of gratitude and the high vibration of it. I want people to feel that love. I want them to feel they've been hugged. They're in a cocoon and they're just surrounded with love and love heals all. You're listening to Accentuate the Positive with Cara and Swain. Today's show is a pre-recorded show recorded late 2023. You're listening today on the United Public Radio Network 107.7 and the UFO Paranormal Radio Network 105.3 FM. M. Yeah, beautiful. When you were talking about the shape of the egg, again, I'm chatting with the guys and they're showing me that shape of the egg in nature. So they're showing me the egg, obviously, which is the chicken inside it. And then the um, they showed me a baby in a womb and how the womb is like an egg shape and the uterus is actually an egg shape. But if you take away the fallopian tubes going to the ovaries, you take that away, you've actually got an egg shape. And I'm like, ah, oh, I never noticed the womb was an egg shape before, before they just showed me today. And then you said something about it's self-cleaning and something came up. I was listening to some doctor on television, I can't remember his name, and they were talking about douches, you know, cleaning inside the uterus. And he said, no, the womb is a self-cleaning oven. You should not touch it. And that just came up as you were talking that egg shape is that self-cleaning oven, like it's self-cleaning. So it doesn't hang on to density or frequency, the shape of it. Yeah. I love that. I lo and I love being a woman. I love the womb energy. I love everything about being a woman. So you're right, though. Our body can heal itself. It can detox itself. It can, but it has to be in the right environment. And no one's going to heal stuck in fight or flight. Mm-hmm. But there's more to this story with the unfolding of the egg because it didn't sort of happen straight away. You got the downloads, but there was more to it, more to the, oh, the, the car accident. Yeah. The car accident was a funny one. I, I felt like I had most of the download 
but my guides were, I think, a little annoyed with me because I just wasn't getting that last piece. And so I got hit 60 miles an hour broadside from a girl that ran through a red light. But I feel it was my guide saying, okay, we got to just blast her to another dimension and we need to get her to get this last piece. And they're like, we just have to do this to her. And they just smack, right? And that's when the rest of the piece came in. And I felt like at that moment I died. I had the near-death experience. I spun around the intersection and a gentleman came and opened my passenger door. He couldn't get into the driver door. And when he opened a door, I said, oh, it's so nice to see you. I had no idea who he was. But in that moment, those few minutes, I knew everything and I knew everybody. And I think I freaked him out a little bit. He said, I just want to tell you that I saw the accident. It wasn't your fault, but I got to go. Here's my phone number. She ran the red light, but I'll be a witness. I said, oh, yeah, so good to see you again. And he's like, I don't know you. Uh -huh. But at that moment, I knew everybody. I was connected. I was one with everybody. It was the most beautiful experience. And I think that's when the rest, I just I was missing something on that level. And my guides were just had to smash it into me. I wasn't hurt. Um, you know, a lot of people get traumatic brain injuries from that kind of an accident. But I still had the the light box at my office. So I was telling the, uh, the paramedics and the police officer, I said, I need to get to my office. I need to get to my office. I need to get in the box. And they're like, okay, sh you need to go to the am go into the hospital. You need to get in the ambulance. I said, no, 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 I need to get to my office. Because I knew that if I waited longer than six or seven hours or a day, that trauma would get programmed into my cell memory. I had to release it before it became part of me. And so I was able to get in there, release it. It was brilliant. And, you know, I fully recovered, but it was a beautiful thing. And I tell people the best thing that ever happened to me, I got in this car accident, but you said the best thing that ever happened to you, said, it was beautiful. And then I also realized that I got an entity because somebody else had died in that intersection. Whoa. And there was so many things that I learned. My car had an entity I had to clear. It was so many things that I learned from that experience. Every time I went through that intersection, after the accident, I, I was clear in that intersection. It was just clear, 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 because there were so many spirits lingering around that intersection. There was an, always an accident there. Wow. You know, when you said that you said to the guy who came and opened the door for you, and said, I saw the accident, you said, oh, thank you, I know you. Yeah. I felt like you could have said, yeah, don't you remember when we were in spirit, we organized this and we, you know, we had this agreement that we'd do this together. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> like you were at that really level honest. of awareness. Okay. Like you're remembering, oh, we this has all been scripted. We organized all this because, you know, Gail, who's in her ego, needed a wake up call. And yeah, it's like the soul talking through the body uh, outside of the veil, as we call it. Yeah, don't you yeah. remember we organized this before it happened? <laughs> I, yeah. I believe it. And I mean, I just expect you know, everything to work out and it always does. So my, my signature in my email is let it flow. Let I tell flow. people, you know, there's, I want to buy an egg. I said, well, if it doesn't flow, let it go. Yeah. You know, it, it should be easy. You should yeah. say, yes, I want to buy an egg and the money's there and everything's there and you find the location and everything's beautiful because the eggs find you yes. as egg guardians and the eggs find the piece of land they want to be on because they do help heal the land. They're self-organizing systems. So the more eggs that are on the planet, the more powerful they're all becoming. And everybody's noticing it. All the egg owners are saying, okay, how many more eggs? Because my egg got more powerful. It just elevated. Oh it my just, God. Yeah. I feel like I want to cry right now. This is hitting me right in the guts. You saying this. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So it's almost like, yeah, they're conscious beings that are coming in the it's form a of a wooden technology. Oh, conscious technology, a wooden egg. It's a spaceship. What do you think of Keshe, Dr. Keshe's egg? He's created a spaceship, plastic looking spaceship type healing egg. Have you checked that out? I haven't seen that. I've seen a oh. lot of different pods. I've seen a lot of pods. different eggs. And mm -hmm. I just, the ones that resonate with me are less technology, more natural materials. Um, because I think we need to get back to the basics. So some of these technologies I see and they're flashing lights in there and they've got a control panel and 
I just think it's too much, especially for the sensitive beings like the autistic children. Uh, it's overstimulation. I think it's going to be some EMFs for sensitive people. And so they don't resonate with me. I get I get uh, overstimulated in the grocery store. The fluorescent lights, you know, shining down on me, shining down on all this beautiful food. And I just wish that I could go into more of a dark or warmly lit grocery store instead of all the flashing fluorescent lights and all the advertising and lights. I just really believe that there's more sensitive beings that are on the planet and we need technologies that are not so EMF and uh, stimulating. I wanted to create a technology that would assist them as much as it'll assist us to help maybe bring us to a vibration where we can communicate with them and see how genius they are and how brilliant they are. Yeah. Speaking of Shirley MacLaine, there's a scene in her movie or out of the book, Out on a Limb, where she's with her friend Stella, Bella, the politician, who used to wear the hat all the time, and she goes to an art exhibition and she's introduced to the guy that takes her to Peru, who becomes her like a human guide into the spiritual journey. And he's talking about the high frequency colours in the art because there's the art that they're looking at is like a city that's like floating in space. And he's talking about the high frequency colors in the art and Bella and, and Shirley, who's Shirley MacLaine at the time, you know, like the actress is just sort of looking at him thinking, uh-huh, high frequency colors, right? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting. I love that scene in the movie. It introduces the frequency of color to people, that movie did. God, that movie was made so many years ago. So awesome. Yeah. My office is blue. I've got, because it's dark out here now, I've got a purple light and kind of shine in the computer. But my um, my room is blue and I have crushed quartz crystals in the paint. So wow. powder and quartz. And then I did that in my bedroom with a purple color for the calming, cooling, relaxing colors and really just try to use color in my life. And um, my clothes try to, you know, circulate the colors and stay away from the grays and the blacks, um, you know, because it can cause depression and the blacks can be no color. So you don't absorb color. You know, I think we need balance of colors just as much as we need balance of different energies in our life. Wow. Yeah. I have a girlfriend who did exactly the same. I'd never heard of that before. She built a, a holiday house and crushed crystals into the paint and painted the holiday house yeah. with the paint with the crushed crystals in it and uh, she was telling me she was showing me around this house and I'm going wow I mean, it didn't it didn't look like it had crystals in the paint because they like powder them basically and put it in the paint people come in my house and they say oh my gosh you're it's your the energy's here so good and, and people that come over they're like I never want to leave I just want to hang out here I'm like no you get to get out of my space I, can, I need my space <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to leave I just want to hang out no go away Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there was a few people involved in bringing through this technology. When I say people from spirit, like I think it's galactic technology, but they appeared to you as personalities that have been yeah. on Earth. Do you want to talk about that? So Edgar Casey was one, yeah, and he said in his book or his little pamphlet, Auras, if somebody would bring together the spiritual forces of sound and the spiritual forces of light, paraphrasing, it'd be a great modality for the future. And so he came through. And I love that we combine sound and light in a resonant chamber. So I think that there's a lot of power to having it in the resonant chamber. And then uh, Royal Rife. Royal Rife was somebody who was always experimenting with frequencies. And I believe that he was spot on and brilliant in his time. And he would test you with the universal microscope. So he could tell what was going on by staining the cells and what frequencies would work. But now a lot of people use the spooky, spooky too, and they think they're using right frequencies, but cancer has mutated since those days. Parkinson's has mutated since those days. Without the use of the universal microscope and looking at the cells, you really can't get accurate frequencies using Rife's technologies. Now you may have a hit or miss you and have some good luck, but people have actually seen him you know, kind of dialing in things and smoking a cigarette inside the uh, inside the egg during their session. 
And the lady, she didn't know who this old guy was that was smoking. And she was describing a picture of who she saw in the egg. And the egg owner said, sounds like this guy right here. And she said, yeah, yeah, it was him. It's Royal Rife. Um, so Tesla Mathematics, um, Kay Gardner, um, she was brilliant in her time, uh, wrote the book Sounding the Inner Landscape. And it was really the pivotal book that taught me about the waveforms of instruments, not necessarily the Solfeggio Suite of 528 and 396. And it, she taught about how the waveform of the flute can affect the organs and the systems and the waveform of the drum. So everything in the harmonic egg is based on the waveforms of the instruments, not the frequencies, because the frequency of the egg is at about 1400 Hertz right now by itself. So I wouldn't want to put 528 in there and, you know, bring it down. And so I started researching and working with the waveforms and the instruments, the tones or the keys of the instruments we're using. And so we want to maybe have flute in the tone of C and we know that when people are missing tones from their voice, that can create emotional and physical uncomfortable situations for them. So for example, if you're missing the tone of E, we might want to use yellow, and then the frequencies are going to get replenished with the tone of E in the color yellow, and you might have allergies, asthma, emphysema, lung problems, and you might even be the zodiac sign of a Leo. Because when you were born, that's maybe a tone that was missing on the planet. So this is all Ani Williams' work, and I just absolutely adore her. And so she's kind of come up with this, and it's been her life's work. And I've noticed that if I do a voice analysis on somebody and replenish those tones, it's actually helping them with those maladies that they have. So it was really interesting to incorporate astrology, tones and keys, waveforms of instruments, colors, and then put it inside of a large wooden egg that's sacred geometric and really to help people bring their bodies into a place where they can heal naturally. Because once you put your body into the right environment, we have amazing bodies, but they can heal yeah. on their own in the right environment. Yep. Self-cleaning ovens, self-healing bodies. Yes, absolutely. God, there's so much to say about this. I know that poor old John of God's been vilified because he was yeah outed as a predator but what went on over there in brazil was amazing and what came through were the light beds the colored the crystal light beds which a lot of my friends who were healers in sydney had and this feels like a like much more of a step beyond the crystal light beds i've been on a crystal light bed many times i didn't have any amazing magic things happen but it felt very lovely and then the fire tribe do you know ford and mickey from fire tribe no. Their, their, well, Ford was in the music industry, you know, she worked with, you name it, I could just, a slew of big names. And now she's putting out music with Mickey that is the Solfeggio, the, the, the 639, what's that, that frequency? Like she's putting out music in all yes. sorts of genres that's, you know, different frequencies. Anyway, I'll connect you to the Fire Tribe. tribe. I love that. I love Mickey that. Ford. Um, so we actually tried aromatherapy, but it was overstimulating. Okay. So you can actually overstimulate. There's a new device called the Holistic. I think it's called the Holist EQ. And when I look at it, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I would be so overstimulated in that there's smells and sounds and lights. And and they're saying, well, let's put this in airports. Can you imagine the, the airport lights, the airport noise, and then you're smelling smells and listening to sounds and seeing lights. I thought, oh my gosh, no, I couldn't do that. But I love that people are being creative right now and trying to really launch into the future of medicine, which is frequency medicine. I'm just so excited about it. I can't wait to see where it goes. I can't wait to see what other things come out. Um, and then just let people use whatever uh, resonates with them. Exactly. So I'm posing the question, about healing so it can balance the frequencies of the body and it can heal the physical body what about healing the emotional body the mental bodies how does it operate like that so i believe that most disease is emotional when you can clear the cell memory from the trauma so i was molested by a priest of the catholic church 
And what has what sound and light therapy did for me is it took that story away from me. It's not my story anymore. Yeah, it happened to me. No big deal. It feels hard for me. It's not it's not my story anymore. Mm -hmm. So it took that story away from me so that I didn't have to live as a victim. And so I think emotionally we hold the emotions of our anger in our liver, kidneys fear, the lungs grief. Well, somebody will come in and say, Hey, I'm having, you know, lung problems. Well, I would say to them, What grief are you holding on to? And they would think I'm psychic because I knew that they were holding on to grief, but, but really it's just where we hold the emotion. So I think most of the, our diseases are emotional. I think Bruce Lipton even said, you know, 99% of all disease is, you know, emotional and it's epigenetics and it's this and that. And so I think it can help you clear the stories that you're holding on to that's holding you back from being the biggest and most amazing human being possible. So I feel like it's really taken away a lot of emotional trauma from me so that I don't have to live with the baggage. So how does it take away your emotional trauma? So I think that we store these emotions in the cell memory and it can clear the cell memory. Okay. The thing that got me was seeing all the eggs connected across the world, like a mycelium network across the world all communicating with each other. And every time there's a new earth, a new egg born on the planet in a different location, all the other eggs get stronger. That's the thing that really like, oh, made me want to burst into tears looking at that. Have you have you heard of the map of Enoch? The map of Enoch. No, tell yeah. us about that. There's this map of Enoch and I don't know a lot about it, but what I started to do is I started to map the first eggs and I haven't done it for, since we've sold maybe 60 of them. And what was showing up is all the eggs were showing up in the wings of the dove of the map of Enoch. And I thought that was really interesting just to see how they were mapping themselves out on the, uh, on the planet. So there's definitely a plan. I had a, a center owner call me and she said, I need to have an egg here in California because the land I live on is a fault line and the egg wants to be here to help to heal that fault line. Is there anyone doing it in Sydney with the eggs? So we just now, because of the uh, exchange rate and the yeah. shipping cost, yeah. we just now hired a company called the Love Wood Company. Can't right. get a bad name. Um, and we, I, I have actually signed a deal with them so that they can make them for, uh, is it the Aust Australasia? So New Zealand, Australia. Right. Mm -hmm. Asia. So that it, you can have access to this technology and it's affordable. So because they're making it in country now in New Zealand, it's going to be more accessible. We just signed this. So it's going to be more accessible because I thought so many people inquire from Australia and yet it's just not affordable to, for us to fly somebody over there to help assemble it, to ship it over there. Shipping is crazy right now. Right. And so, to have it manufactured here and then sent over there. And send it over there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But you could make it here. The, so you've got someone making it in New Zealand. Yes. Mr. Mr. Woodlove, Lovewood. Yes. I reckon there'll definitely be someone in Australia that could do it here as well. I mean, they're amazing. You know, it's a, the thing about Australia that I've noticed in the conscious community is that more than the galactic conversations, which I love having with people across the world, they're really into the conversation with the land. There are so many earth angels here in Australia, so many, especially up in the Byron region where I love to go. So many people connected to the land and wood and natural this and, you know, communing with nature. And so anyway, what I'm saying is there's definitely going to be somebody can make it here. I think once one gets into Australia, look out. Yeah, that's what, that's what I feel. Absolutely. We had one going to Canada for many years. We didn't have any in Canada. Now we have 40 in Canada. I mean, it's just crazy. It's just taken off. You got 40 in Canada. Woohoo! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But something else has developed uh, because the egg is huge and it's uh, expensive to make and to ship and to get, but you've got another sort of chamber going on. You've got the, the cylindrical chamber. Oh, right. Tell us about that. What's going on with that? Um, during COVID, I had so many people tell me, I'm afraid to come out, but I want my egg session. And here is me. I'm open for business. I had to close signed up because the city was, you know, kind of coming down on people that were open. So I still told everybody the close sign is up, but we're open, open for hugs, open for whatever. And so people would come in and they would do their sessions, but there were still people that were afraid and that's okay. 
And so I said, well, maybe I can create something for the home, which it's the same music, but it, it's not going to be the shape of an egg because people can't fit it in their home. So it's just uh, 48 inches in diameter. I don't know what the millimeters are, but 48 inches in diameter. So I'm still following some, following some sacred dimensions, but I created just a cylinder like a light capsule. And so it uses the same music, one light string and one speaker, and it's made out of oak inside. So I just thought there were some spiritual properties there. And I'm, I call it the let it flow therapy because I think there was so much domestic violence and so many things happening during COVID when people were in lockdown that I feel like some of these children were yelled at and with all the stress in the family. And I thought, let me create this lift. And when you feel like you want to say something that you might regret, go get a lift. Just go into the lift. And it, it's been really beautiful. People love it. And the integration time for an egg session, because the cubic airspace is more and it's more powerful, is about five to seven days. But you can do a lift daily. You know what, girl? I feel like, I feel like, because I think, uh, I saw in a past life I was okay future life I'm involved in teleportation um, and since I was a kid I've been thinking about how we move around this planet and I've said on many shows that you know now I'm in my 60s I can't believe I'm still in a petrol car when I need to get anywhere like what but I feel like these little lifts are the beginning of a device that we'll have in our house that will not won't only be for get in the you know get a lift but literally a lift <laughs> like like it's the beginning like beam, beam me up scotty beam me up scotty absolutely yeah. and that's what i feel too i feel like i don't want to get on an airplane i don't want to sit in the airport i don't want to be crammed in this you know like box with all everybody's breathing for five hours right i feel like you know we know how to remote view people do controlled remote viewing i right. think we can by locate and I think we can do that. We I had uh, Jake Weaver from the Midnight on Earth podcast just did a session in our Beaverton, Oregon center. And he said, as soon as the door closed, he said, the walls disappeared. And he right. just saw the stars. Mm -hmm. It was so open. It was a portal. And he just like sent me a 22 minute uh, YouTube video about his experience. Wow. And he wants me to call. He wants me to call him tonight. And I thought, what a beautiful expression of, you know, because people say I was, I'm claustrophobic, but I didn't feel it in there. It felt so big and so right. vast and so expansive. Mm -hmm. And for him, the walls disappeared and he just saw the universe, the stars, everything was there for him. Is this in the lift or the, in the egg? In the egg, in the egg. This was in yeah. the egg, yeah. In the egg, yeah. But I've had, I've had some experiences in the lift where it just felt like, it was a portal and it's this light capsule. Yes. And um, yeah, beam me up, Scotty. Few, few, few things come to mind. So I had Susie Hansen on the show years ago, who was a child who was up on the ships with the predominantly the grace, but she said there are other flavors of ETs up there as well. And um, they had a somewhat like your lift sort of chamber that you went into, and there was light and sound frequency that would transport you around the ship. And it was a conscious technology. You had to think about where you want to go. You pop into this sort of like a uh, shower of light that you pop into this light chamber in this sort of circular lift thing. And you think about where you want to go and it would take you to, it would take you there uh, around the ship. And I was fascinated with that. It kind of sounds a little bit like that. You're listening to Accentuate the Positive with Cara and Swain. Today's show is a pre-recorded show recorded late 2023 you're listening today on the united public radio network 107.7 and the ufo paranormal radio network 105.3 fm out of new orleans i mean and, and i appreciate what you said about i don't want to come on here and do a sales pitch i want to come on here and inspire people i want to influence people to do their dream to get on their path I want to influence people and inspire them to know that they can be anything they want to be. They could do anything they want to do, but you got to eliminate the fear because people get you know afraid because I just think I want to share the wealth. I want to bring people along with this um, in this journey 
I wish that everybody could experience my life. I wish everybody could manifest whatever they want. I, I need or yeah. want nothing. And I just wish that everybody could feel this way because yeah. it's so freeing. It's so, it's so empowering. It, it just feels so good to not have to worry about that energy of money. Yeah. And so it's, just, it's beautiful. So I, I, you know, I help people get the financing. I help people do their dream. I do so many things. I created a ministry so I could give back. And uh, so I, I donated to the Island Dolphin Care. So we just got back from Key Largo, Florida. I saw that yeah. on your Facebook page. Is, you've got dolphins everywhere. She's going, oh, she's got dolphins everywhere. <laughs> I know. It was so cool. But I made a donation and we flew down for their gala. And so I got to swim with the dolphins. And um, the most magical thing was the belly swim. So you put your hands out like Superman. And then a dolphin comes right up and belly to belly with you, grab onto their fin and pull yourself towards their belly. And they're swimming upside down and just pulling you. Wow. And they are so happy there. Cause my concern was, are they making them do this? Mm -hmm. Do they love their jobs? And so I've done some remote sessions on one particular dolphin that was sick. And they said, we don't know how she's alive. Even the vet said what we did didn't save her. We didn't think we could save her. So did the harmonic gang help her? And when I went there, I said, I want to meet Lotus. It was so cute. So they had her come over and she swam up and kind of turned on her side. So one eyeball was just staring at me and it was like, she knew me it was so beautiful. Absolutely. I've chatted to the dolphins who are in captivity and asked them about people get so upset about having any wild animal in captivity, wild creature in captivity. And they said, they're such a highly evolved, highly intelligent beings. They said, do you think that if we didn't want to be here, that anyone could stop us, you know, from being, do you think we're victims of this? If we're here, we're choosing to be here and we're a part of helping humanity through our, through what we offer. And a part of that is being in captivity, they said to me. And I'm like, okay, then. I mean, not all, you know, there are some right. terrible videos out there Absolutely. of dolphins in cages that are not actually interacting with humans and they're just, you yeah. know, there are some awful things like that. But they said we have the ability to to, to leave our body at will and um, if we don't like the environment we're in, we leave. You know, if the body dies, we just, we're out of here. So they're that evolved that they've got, I know. Like, well, what we're just learning, like you say, you have, can have an egg for like making a conscious choice to sort of like zip out and go to another dimension and leave the body when your time's up. They've got, they know all that stuff already. They said, they laughed at me and said, do you think that we don't know? We're not victims to anything. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. So it was interesting conversation they're, with the yeah, dolphins. They're amazing. Mm. They're so amazing. Yeah, there's several um, places in Florida you can swim with the dolphins. I've been to three of them. And two of them were great. One of them, you could tell they were making the dolphins do things. And they probably, you know, eh, they can take it or leave it. But they weren't. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like a place of love. And mm -hmm. it felt more like a commercial place of greed. Mm -hmm. and so I obviously didn't donate to that place. But right. I just I just love to support, you know, children and animals. Yeah. Yeah. The guys were saying reciprocity, you know, what you give, you give back. I think, what is it? I had uh, Marina Jacoby, energy philanthropy, we she called it energy philanthropy. The energy you put out into the universe comes back. So it's not about that commerce. You know, we we're talking about the money making thing. It's about yeah, as you say, money is energy is money, and what you put out comes back to you in many forms, in the form of money, or in, in the form of help, or guidance, or knowledge, or reciprocity energy philanthropy dying one well i'm excited to see some eggs down under and i'm definitely going to be a part of that story i don't exactly know how at the moment i've got some ideas i've got some ideas i'm a great connector as i said when i was talking about by tribe one of my missions is to connect people i'll connect you to some people that can make it happen as far as maybe building them out here and I see you coming down under and getting this getting this party happening. Maybe not this year, maybe the year after, but some at some stage in the not too distant future. Mm. Yeah, I just let it flow, and everything just works out for me somehow. Yeah, absolutely. Everything works out. Everything works out. Everything works out. 
the yeah. mantra that people leave this show with. Everything works out for me. <laughs> Everything works out for me. That's it. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank Any last so much. pearls of wisdom you want to leave people with before we go? Um, so I've been on this mission to be like an energy teacher and just to tell people to listen to your body. You don't need um, anyone to tell you what to take or what to do or how to feel. You can tune into your own body. Just listen to your body and you'll know what you need. And so I think we just need to get out of the paradigm of saying, what do you, what do I do? What do I take? You know, you know, please help me. I think we can help ourselves. So I would just leave people with, you know, be discerning. You know, if you go uh, somewhere and, and you have that stop, that small, still voice in your pit of your stomach that says, this isn't going to be good for you, then don't do it. Don't put your body through it. Just listen to your body. I really want more people to empower themselves to take responsibility for their own health. I think we'll, if we could do that, the uh, planet would have less illness and disease. Absolutely. Just one more thing before we go. Have you seen that healing technology that Jason Shirker from yes. Unify had? What do you think of that? It's, there's the one in Sydney. What, what do you think of that? It's a sound frequency so thing. Without giving my opinion, because I don't want to influence anybody from not using it if they don't want, if they want to. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like they're doing, it's, the sessions are too long. I think they're scrambling people's bodies because um, it's too long. It's too much. The body starts to get enough. And then it says, okay, enough. And then it starts to do something negative instead of positive. So I think if you want to try it, I think it's, you know, something you should try if you uh, are called to it. Um, but if you're in there for two and three hours and you feel like it's too much, I would just leave. Just listen to your body because I think that it's just too much. And I can go into a lot of opinions um, but I don't want to influence anybody from, you know, doing it or not doing it, because if it were to help somebody and in, in my opinion, led them to not do it, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that. Yeah. Like with anything, there's a lot of different modalities of healing. And I guess we've got to go with what aligns with us and there will be people that will be totally aligned with that. And it'll be, it'll be the best Absolutely. thing for them. And then there will be people that won't be aligned with it. And yeah. There's different yeah, strokes might, for different blokes. <laughs> right. Somebody might want to just do Reiki. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that he's really powering out there. And he is powering it out there. He yeah. is powering it out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm more of the soft, the soft cell. He knows yeah. about. Um, he, he knows about you? Oh, yeah. He knows about me. Okay. I actually contributed to, contributed to Unified in the knowledge base. Okay. I did some kind of meditations before he came out with the EE uh, system. And, um, you know, I'm just disappointed that some of these are don't say, okay, look at all these beautiful things instead of just saying there's only this one thing. And I guess what I want. Not I agree. I agree. I want people to know about everything. Yes. Um, the, there's several influencers that I've talked to. They said, well, I can't interview you because it's a conflict of interest because I promote this technology. Yeah. And I think if you're an influencer, you should say, here's all the things that are beautiful that you should try. Oh my God, conflict of interest. Okay, so I work as a healer, teacher, you know, conscious, but I have been spent 15 years putting other people on my shows who talk about how they heal and teach. Right. <laughs> that would be a conflict of interest, wouldn't it? I mean, that would seem like I'm going to sort of not promote people, but have them share their stories about how amazing they are. And actually that's the work I do. So it would seem like a conflict of interest. And yet I've been doing it for 15 years. Actually, I've been doing it for 25 years because before I had the radio show, I was doing it in live events every but Monday you night. Live, you live in the new energy, the new Absolutely. earth. Absolutely. You don't live right. in competition. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, there's exactly. so many people that could, um, they could help more people um, heal by telling people about things like the harmonic egg or the EE system, if you don't know about it, or or uh, everything that's going on. or right. the open seed pod that Deepak Chopra has been promoting. There's so many things out there. Right. The yeah. Before bed, the juve lights. Um, I, I actually did an interview with a guy who's the bio light guy with red light therapy. And I was a little bit nervous. I thought, is he going to shove red light therapy down my throat? And he was open-minded, beautiful soul. We had an amazing conversation. 
And, you know, he asked me about red light therapy. I said, yeah, I think red light therapy has its place, but we need the balance of all the light colors, all the nanometers of the color spectrum from the root chakra to the ground chakra. And he was so open-minded. We had a beautiful conversation, such a great connection, but I was nervous because I'm like, okay, so he's going to try to, you know, shove this red light therapy and we're either going to be in a fight or we're going to, you know, collaborate and have a really nice cooperative communication. And we did. So, yeah, so these, it's, it's one of my soap boxes that these influencers are out there, um, you know, providing one thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Influencers. It's all the money game. I know. Cause yeah. I, yeah. Cause I don't do this show as part of the money game. I don't get caught up with that story. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. All right. I, we're going to go. We could keep talking all day. Thank you again. I know. Right. Thank you again for sharing. Thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you. It's so nice to connect with you. It's such a beautiful soul. Thank you for all you're doing for the planet. You're listening to Accentuate the Positive with Karen Swain. Today's show is a pre-recorded show recorded late 2023. You're listening today on the United Public Radio Network 107.7 and the UFO Paranormal Radio Network 105.3 FM. M out of New Orleans. Wow. I think that conversation was a long time coming. Yeah. Felt very connected to Gail and what she's doing. As I said, when she talked about all the eggs talking to each other and creating a, a network across the planet, that really spoke to me. Conscious technology and also the thought of the lifts which you can see behind me. That's one of the little lifts that you can put in your house. Then being the beginning to a teleportation portal that you can have in your home, that really turns me on and excites me too because I just think, why don't we have this technology? We seem to have been held back from frequency and energy technology that can heal, that can transport, that can do amazing things like energy, energy, energy. Everything is energy, but fast moving energy, high frequency energy, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? I, um, yeah, I hope I don't die of old age before this happens, you know, just stepping into this beam of light and you can go anywhere on the planet you can heal yourself. And it's something you've got in the corner of your room in your house. <laughs> just so cool. Garnet Shaw House of the last time I had him on the show. I haven't had him on for a few years, actually, a couple of years. I remember I used to have him on every year because I just love his books. In the last interview, he talked about in his book, uh, you know, his spirit guide, Albert, takes him traveling around the universe and shows him all sorts of things. He went to a parallel reality of Earth. I think I think that's what happened. And they went through the same catastrophes that we've been going through with the pandemic and all that sort of stuff. And he said that what came out of people looking for healing after the pandemic was teleportation technology. And so he went to a parallel Earth or some other sort of planet like Earth where they had this technology in their homes. Like, And so cars and trucks and planes and boats didn't exist on that planet or in that society or in that parallel world anymore because they had the teleportation technology which came out of looking for a cure to the disease or whatever, you know, whatever it came out of them going through the same thing that we went through. And I thought, oh, interesting, interesting. I don't know how many years it took. Uh, I don't know how many years or how it came about. He didn't go into those details. Um, he often doesn't go into any details about what he sees in his astral adventures with his spirit guide. He just reports what he sees, but there's no, like I have a million, how did that happen? And what did they do? And what did they use? And, you know, give me the steps and the details, but he doesn't have the details. He just reports what he sees. And I thought that was really interesting. But I feel like when I have those questions, like give me the details, I feel like with every conversation I have on the show, I get another detail, another part to the story. And even though this is a healing chamber, it might one day turn into a transportation chamber. <laughs> Get rid of the cars. <laughs> Actually, a friend turned up the other day, a sister of a friend, and she just bought a brand new Tesla. And um, I'm like quizzing her. Tell me about it. What does it do? 
how does it do this? How much did you pay for it? <laughs> it was interesting to it. It was a very beautiful looking vehicle, actually. I mean, I have to say driving cars is fun. Flying planes, that's fun too. And it's going to be a long time before we all those things disappear in this world. Won't be in my lifetime anyway. But um, healing is possible. I was telling Gal that I rarely promote healing, especially physical healing modalities, because... I teach deliberate creation and when you shift your thinking, when you tell a new story, you have a new experience in your body and your life. And so I like to sort of talk more about that, how to be a deliberate creator and, you know, creating health in your body and joy in your life and manifesting what you want, not, in, not only for yourself but for this planet. I like to talk about that technology, mental technology. But I did chat with the guides about that and I said, what about all this technology that's hitting the planet like the egg? I mean, how is that? Why do we need that when we can just do it with our minds? Yeah, they're telling me now, well, it's a bit like the internet, isn't it? You're sitting on a physical computer talking to people across the world with your physical technology. You could do it telepathically, but you don't know how to do that yet. So the physical technology is that step to moving into a more telepathic society where you can have internet conversations on the mental internet <laughs> instead of using the electronic internet they say it's the same with technology it's an amplification of the what you can do mentally but using some sort of technology they said if we waited for the world to do what you ask people to do clean up their thoughts and their beliefs and be more joyous the world would never evolve because people are so stubborn when it comes to changing their belief structure they get into ruts and habits and and so this technology can amplify the new story, not amplify the old story. If you sit into this technology, you have to think about what you want rather than what you don't want. And then the technology can amplify that and take, you know, as Gail said, take the memory out of the cells of the old story and the trauma. Yeah, it's just an amplification for conscious evolving on this planet, which we need. Because, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I woke up probably when I was a kid, actually started waking up, started asking questions, started receiving answers. Mum dies. Amplification of that happening when I'm a teenager. So uh, for a long time, I've been watching the conscious evolution of this planet. And it has seemed like a very slow journey to me. So all this sort of technology is accelerating that consciousness journey. It is exciting to see podcasters out there getting millions and millions of views on conversations like this i don't feel a competitive edge with any of them the message is getting out there but i'm just blown away at how it, the acceleration of the expansion of these conversations is happening watching every day i find a new podcast show that you know i look at their subscribers like 250,000 subscribers and they're having this conversation et conversations it's fascinating how the expansion of these, these conversations going on. So things are really revving up. And I think that this technology is all part of that acceleration of um, the expansion of consciousness. Anyway, I'll stop talking now. Inner Sanctums for this year. Sissel was the last one. If you didn't watch that beautiful conversation with Sissel, just love Sissel Carlson, Sissel Adronia Carlson, who is a Norwegian shamanic energy healer. She found me through joining our Inner Sanctum group and she was a member for ages and me, I get on them. I tell everybody that's in my group, you are a healer, you are a teacher. What are you doing? How are you going to do that? And they all argue with me. No, no, not everybody, but some. No, I'm not a teacher, I'm not a teacher. But they are. And I remember saying to a few of them, well, what's your day job? And they said, oh, I'm a teacher. <laughs> Teach in high school or junior school. And I'm like, do you think that when you retire, you'll be anything different? You'll be still teaching. You'll just be teaching consciousness instead of maths. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so she came in and um, and then started getting out there and, and teaching and going down to Peru and doing journeys down there. But she's just beautiful. Check out the conversation with Cecil. It was really lovely. Absolutely beautiful. Big love to all of you. And remember, check out the book Awakened by Death if you haven't already. And I will catch you next time. Thanks again for tuning in. Big love. Bye for now.